concept relating to this, I mentioned here in our example when we have the spatula, I don't know what to call it. When we have this spatula moving through that magnetic field, this piece of aluminum I think is what it is. As the piece of aluminum is actually physically moving, we end up with an induced voltage in there. It's called the Hall voltage, and it's all due to this force on a moving charge. So if I have a piece of metal and it's moving through an external magnetic field, so let's say we have an external magnetic field that's out of the board, It could be something like a bar magnet, like this. It could be something else. As that piece of metal moves through the magnetic field, this metal is made up of a whole bunch of protons and electrons. What direction will the force be in on the protons? So using the right hand rule, what direction will the force be in? So you put your index finger in the direction of velocity. Then you need to rotate your wrist until the magnetic field comes out of your palm. My magnetic field's coming out of the board, so out of my palm's that way. So my thumb's pointing down. So positive charges are feeling a force towards the bottom, which means negative charges are feeling a force towards the top. So what happens is we end up with these negative charges accumulating up here leaving the positive charges behind. So as long as that conductor is moving through that magnetic field, it has a separation of charge. Well, if there's a separation of charge, that means there's now an electric field in here. And that electric field is also exerting a force on the charges. But that electric force is in the opposite direction. Positive charges want to go with the electric field. Negative charges want to go opposite the electric field. So we end up with a balance. We end up with a balance between the magnetic force trying to push the positive charges down and the electric force trying to push the positive charges up. With this electric field, that means there's some sort of potential difference between the two ends there. The magnetic force is QVB, the electric force is Q times E. Turns out Q cancels. So we have the speed that this conductor is moving at times the strength of the field it's moving through has to equal the electric field that's induced is what we call it. It's created because of that motion. But remember, electric field will be potential difference over distance. So if I call L the distance between the charges, then we can say delta V, the potential difference, it's induced, would equal L times V times B. This delta V is called the Hall voltage. It is also called motional EMF. It's an induced voltage. It's there only because that conductor is moving. If that conductor comes to rest and stops moving, all the charges move back to their original location and it becomes completely, no, no charge is separated anymore. V, this little V is the speed how fast it's moving, L is how wide the conductor is, B is the strength of the magnetic field that it's in. So we're going to talk more about induction, inducing voltages because of the magnetic fields. It actually is um, quite interesting because it's the whole concept behind how credit cards work, how the pickup coils on a guitar work, all sorts of different applications are due to induction.